everybody. Welcome to a new video of James Speed Show. So today we're going to start on the second part of uh, disassemble the engine. So front cover and the oil pan. So first if you're new to the channel, uh, this engine is for my SL24 3 a turbo project. The body is over here. Uh, M13 V8 5 liter uh, needs a little bit of a rebuild and uh, checking all everything. So uh, in the right corner of you can click on my logo and see all the other videos and projects I've done and reviews and don't have forget to look on my website. Yeah, speech up with comments over here. So um, today we're going to start as the timing cover, getting the chain off and that sort of stuff. I can see the guides more and uh, opening the bottom end of it and then uh, turn over the engine so I can see all the bores and yeah for to get the timing cover off of course you need to get the pulley off a water pump I already removed including with the uh, thermostat housing tension that sort of stuff so um, yeah uh, I for I wanted to get the oil filter housing off I can do that later off also because but I need an uh, 46 millimeter uh, uh, socket for it. I don't order it yet, so I'm just going to take it off like it is now. Uh, there's no ring underneath. You need to change. That's the best thing to do it, but I will do it later. Um, so uh, to get the timing cover off, you always have to remove the the cylinder head covers. You need to re remove. But you also need to remove two bolts that are normally in here, sc screwed in here, there's these two, you, because when the heads are off, you off also need to remove it of course. But you can leave the heads on when you move the timing cover, but you need to get those bolts off of course. But I don't have the problem because it's my heads are off. And the bottom part of the sump needs to come off. That's also what I'm going to do, and of course the big pulley. Alternator, all the pumps need to go off. Uh, water pump you can always change out when it's needed. Uh, there are two critical o-rings in here. I will show you them. So there are not a lot of things that can cause trouble on these engines, but two o-rings can do a lot in this engine. I don't know if you can see it's very good, but there is an o-ring in here, and this one is already a uh, little bit cracked, and there's another one in here. These ones separate the uh, timing cover uh, from the coolant system. So these ones cost like what I think two or three euros a piece, maybe less. If they break, you have a chance to get coolant in your oil system, and yeah, then your uh, yeah when you get water in your oil, I don't know how to explain that. It's very bad for your engine. So. Uh, that is one thing you need to, when these engines get older, that is also a problem on these engines. It's just, uh, yeah, most of the people they say they get swollen up because the people use not the good coolant or not the good oil. There's a lot of discussions about it, but yeah, just need to change them. So, I'm going to remove that. So, put, I'm going to put the camera on the stand and then screw everything off. Uh, get a little bit rid of some tools over there so I can put the stuff over there and then go from there. So, oil sump is removed, uh, there are 12 bolts in here, it's just sealed in between, um, looks not too bad, carbon in here of course, it was suspected already, there's a little bit of oil in the pan, I'm going to look in there if I can find anything that I don't want to see, um, so now the cover is split in here, so you can see there's also some bolts in here. Uh, the first have to have a look. These also need to loosen up, and then you can get it removed. The front of the cover. There are some bolts here. All those bolts need to come off. So, going to start on that. You have to put the engine upside down, otherwise everything will drop in here. I have seen that also with somebody who also did a uh, timing cover removal that all your stuff will drop. So I don't want that. So uh, I'm going to remove the front now. So let's go.
Of Reserve came up pretty easy. Now you can see there are different lengths of bolts. Um, there is a diagram for this, how to mount it, and also where you have to put sealant on the cover on certain positions. And um, it looks pretty clean, not too bad. I think the original, these are the original numbers. I will check the numbers later if they are also the old numbers. But I look not too bad in the first place. Okay, what I really want to mention, I think this is pretty important about this uh, section, is you got these two O-rings. You can see this one is already pushed out. And you can see this one has already been a lot bigger. So normally it's, I don't know if I can put it back in, but you can see it's already swollen up. So these are very famous O-rings and you can find a lot more about these. And this are, is an every M113 and an every 112 engine. So this one is positioned here and you can see it's all dirt debris around it. So I don't didn't think this one had ever leaked. Also the other one, don't think it ever had a leak. I also cannot find any water in the sump. But if you can see, if you take this one out, you can see it's completely uh, not completely in one piece but it's not that it has been leaking you can see there is some parts missing on the inside and I, I don't know yeah I didn't find it but this one has already been a lot bigger as you can see as you see on this side there is already a crack on that side so if you get this one out you can see on the inside it's already starting to get damaged so this is really important to, to do this so I'm really happy to see um, that they've not been leaking but also that it's really needed to change them so that's a very good point for the rest it all looks looks pretty good I think this has never been opened before I think it all looks, yeah, it, I have to check these numbers, I think these are maybe the old part numbers on it. Also what I checked before I took this one off is that I found that this one bolt is, has a, not a normal thread, so it's left, it's a, not a normal thread. So this one you need to loosen the other way around. This is the only bolt that has a different thread than all the other ones. So normally you loosen them up left wide and this you have to put the other side around. So that's very good to know. You can see also the oil passages in here. Oil passages here, here. It's another one. Good, this is the coolant passages into the block. So, looked all pretty good. Going to put this away and then I'm going to start to get the bottom uh, some part removed. I have to get the sensor off. Leave the oil pump in and then we can see the main bearings, that sort of stuff. I'm going to take the flywheel off and then, uh, yeah.
So diamond cover is removed. Um, level sensor is connected to the sun. I'm not sure if I'm going to place it back or replace it. I just connect it. Of course I have to close the hole always of this sensor. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. <coughs> uh, if I have a position on the dash that I can connect it, I will do it of course. Uh, looks all pretty good. It's dirty, but yeah, I already have seen it from the other parts. It all looks the same, so yeah. So I just drop a bolt, I got it out, it's tucked into the cylinder. And now we can see a little bit in here, it's always interesting. You can see those pistons, uh, if you look in there, it's just nice and clean. You can see the oil squirters for the pistons. That's also nice for an engine like this that maybe don't even need it. It already has oil squirters in there. So the cylinder liners look very good. I really like it. So you can also see what is nice to see is that if you shorten the drive shafts or the yeah the con the connecting rods that you don't really have any space to do that. Some people may do it because they want to have a lower compression. Uh, it's not really a possibility in here. So if you have a um, like a 55 AMG engine. So as you can see it here how close it is. It's just very very close and I don't even think this is the lowest point of it. So let's have a look a little bit. This is the lowest point. So you can see how close it is to the crankshaft. So you cannot really shorten the connecting rod. That's very good to see because I thought about that. So looks all very yeah, it looks good. I d I'm not really surprised how it looks. Um, so yeah, let's get the chain off and then we can turn over the engine to the other side. Uh, oil pump I remove later on and then I can turn and see all the cylinder walls and clean out the, the cylinder walls. So. see they look all pretty clean. I don't know if you can see it on camera but they, they looks like there are some lines in here but you cannot feel anything. So it's yeah, it's all pretty good. Only in the top you feel a little bit of a line here. And I think that's all the only the dirt. That's on this side. It all looks looks very good. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is looking to be underneath the LS seal 
that there are some honing grooves underneath. So of course these cylinders are bored to a certain size and then yeah etched to the right value. So these these lines I don't think it's is very yeah doesn't do anything. So it all looks looks very good to me. So that's the video for this part, part number two. So I dismantled the timing cover and the bottom bottom half of the engine. So the next video, part three, I will remove the uh, pistons with the connecting rods and I can see the crankshaft. So that's the next part and I can see the condition of that. That's the last part and then uh, yeah, then we can talk about how I'm going to rebuild this engine and what I'm going to do about it and I need to clean everything of course. So that will be the next part. So I hope you like this video. If there are any questions, leave some comments below. In the right corner you can see my logo. You can click on it and see all the other details and have a look on jspeedshop.com. So, thanks for watching and see you for the next one. Bye bye.